So here I want to quickly look at service templates and a really quick look at server app V. So on the server app V, it's essentially just a package that I import into the library. So I created it in my server app V sequencing environment. And then within then the two settings it extracted out that needed to be set when I deploy this was just the credentials to be used for the service and actually nothing else. I could add additional things to this, maybe a different URL or port numbers or whatever, but the two things that it automatically abstracted was when you deploy this, I need username and password credentials for the service because it, it's not going to cache those. Now I can set default values, but I haven't done that. Once I have that, and I don't even have to use server app V, the next thing is actually to create a service template. Now I can create a brand new service template. So if I just say create service template, you can see it's given me a little wizard. Do I want a completely blank canvas, uh, a single tier, a two tier, a three tier, whatever I want to do. So let's say I just created a two tier, for example. And then it gives me those tiers. I can then drag in templates that I want to use for that tier. Drag in another one. If I had different templates, I maybe have a SQL template I could use. Uh, I can then go and add applications maybe to it. So maybe I wanted to use a server app V or something. That's part of my application configuration. I say, yeah, install an application. I'm gonna add a virtual app. And then I can browse through and I can select my Apache. So I can go through and I can configure each of these tiers. What I'm actually going to do is, um, like an old English show, is show you one I prepared earlier. So I'm going to open the designer. And this is a three tiered service. And what this is actually doing, I have like a, a web tier, a middleware tier, a SQL tier. I'm using Apache on that web front end. I've got a hardware load balancer configuration that it's going to use. And the interesting thing is here, if you look down the bottom, I can actually say, how many counts of this VM instance should I have? I start off with two, but I can go to five. I can have a minimum of one. I have upgrade domains. So imagine I have 10 instances of the web tier and I've deployed this and then I update this template and I want to update a deployed instance with the new configuration. I may not want to take down the entire service. So I can create multiple upgrade domains, which means if I'm deploying an update, it'll only maybe take down half of them or a third of them. So, so like Windows Azure has that same concept of upgrade domains to control keeping availability of a service, I can do exactly the same thing with VMM. So I could go in, maybe this has been running in production for 10 months and I wanna update this VM template with a newer one. Instead of maybe 2008 R2, it's now Windows 8. So I could update this service template and I could go and right click on instances of this service and say update. And we're actually going to roll out all these changes. So just, I mean, go into this play around but you can see you can add hardware load balancers. I could add additional tiers if I wanted to. It's, I can select VM template for that new tier, additional properties, etc. So it's not limited to three. You don't have to have three. I could have no tiers. I have one, two, three, four, five, whatever I want to do. Whatever you need for your service to function, I can model that within the service template designer. And then once you have all of this, you can just deploy these out very, very quickly.